Nathan Smith, also known as Nathan Sharp, also also known as Nate Wants to Battle, is a musician that has come to be widely known and respected among many fandoms across the internet. Growing up, if you were into Pokemon, anime, and of course Five Nights at Freddy's, then chances are you most likely stumbled across the revolutionary magic put out by this one man. But as Nate was launched into stardom and the spotlight, disaster lurked behind the scenes. What happens when a creator becomes tied to a single franchise, unable to move on? What happens when members of the community that brought you so much joy turn out to be despicable people? What happens when your passion and drive turn into a chore? Well, I'm glad you asked because today we'll be looking at just that. Join me as we discuss what exactly happened to Nate Wants to Battle. It's important to reflect on where it all stemmed from before we dive deeper into what may have gone wrong. Nate's beginnings were a humble one, as most are. I was tired. I was overall not, not great. Video games were a very, very important release for me. I had also created what I would call at the time my side channel and wanted something lighthearted something fun. And so, being someone who loved both music and games, it wasn't long before the opportunity presented itself for him to mix the two in an artistic style. On my drive home, these lyrics or payphone just started popping into my head, and they were about Pokemon. And two hours later, I had created I'm at a Center. I'm at a center trying to get better. My first ever Pokemon parody. And it worked. It worked, man. Nothing I had ever done in my life as a musician had ever performed that well. And it's no surprise that his parody garnered as much attention as it did. Content creators didn't know this as well back then as we all do now, but attaching yourself to something that's already trending is a surefire way of rising alongside whatever it is that you're covering. A bonus would be to bring something new to the table that no one else has been able to, and Nate most certainly met that mark. No one's doing rock music about this. No one's making whatever you want to call it, metal, core, emo, whatever you would label it as. No one is making heavy rock music about this game. And that could be a, I guess, fun idea. The Pokemon parodies would continue until 2015 in addition to whatever else Nate decided to post at the time. Though this era of his channel has long since been privated, remnants of these memories still exist within people that enjoyed them. 2014 will forever be marked as the year when a small indie game took the internet by storm. It was impossible to ignore the influence this meager horror title had on the scope of YouTube and every other social site active at the time. It was impossible to ignore the popularity of a game called Five Nights at Freddy's. Everyone was let's playing this game. Everybody was talking about this game. Songs, original songs about the game, not even covers, just band songs were popping off. And that would change my life. Forever. Little did Nate know, this would be the most defining moment of his career. It's no secret that FNAF is what Nate is most well known for. Whether that be for better or worse is something that we'll go into later. Even the community post I made on him has people stating how the songs Nate made around the Fazbear franchise are what grounded their childhood. That post was also the most well-received one on my channel, so honestly, it's thanks to all of you that this video was made. Subscribe to help me out in the future with what you want to see. Believe me, there's a lot more content on other creators making its way to you very soon, and I'd love for all of you to be a part of it. To put it bluntly though, his original songs revolving around the multitude of Freddies are what allowed him to garner a large enough following which led to him achieving great things with this newfound fanbase. In my eyes, Nate was always capable of the feats he's accomplished. FNAF was merely a tool he used to unlock the doors to the mainstream music industry where he really got to show what he was capable of. Those people that call Nate an overnight success don't know the definition of that term. To be an overnight success is to be thrown into the spotlight with little to no effort. This couldn't be falser when it comes to the story of Nathan Sharp. Music was always his passion, yes, but he had to struggle to reach his goals. 
Financially, emotionally and creatively, I imagine it was all a strain on him before he got to see just how much people care about his work. Since then, he's been able to collaborate with people he looked up to himself while composing the most beautiful pieces that you might recognize from widely popular mediums today. Collaborated with a bunch of big content creators that I've looked up to. I got to work on official songs for shows that I grew up watching. I've voiced in official dubs for anime that I love. This goes without even mentioning how he's gone on tour and outright established his own music label. His art has reached Sonic Frontiers, Attack on Titan, and Dragon Ball Z to say the least. He isn't just some FNAF songwriter, though the shadow of that franchise would not leave him anytime soon as we'll see. Going back to that same community post I mentioned earlier, you can also see a trend of people that recall fond times listening to Nate's songs, but there's hardly any mention of what he's been up to in the present. That isn't just my community though, anyone can sense an absence of his from the fandom he's been associated with for so very long. He went from hanging out with MatPat, Mark, AJ, the Game Grumps and so many others to now being largely isolated, or so it seems. So what has apparently gone wrong? Well, there's no one right answer, so it's better to lay it all out at once. Among Nathan's ever-growing list of successes was the aforementioned tour he got to go on. This was where he got to perform his songs live on stage in front of an audience of thousands where he got to truly shine. That wouldn't be all though, Nate decided that he wanted to highlight others in the same industry as him. After all, he knew what it was like to build yourself up from nothing and so he wanted to lend a hand to those that didn't have as big of a platform as his. I got so big of waffles. Thus, in 2017, Nate rebranded his original channel into Give Hot Records. He established an independent music label that could give back to the fans and show what others were capable of. It also served as a method for Nate and his cohorts such as Sean Christmas to publish their songs the way they saw it best. All in all, this would be a massive W for Nate, with Give Heart Records now being synonymous with his brand. All the while, his personal content would move over to his gaming channel where he posted a bunch and got to engage more with his community. His videos over yonder were also a part of his craft that was privated, though some screenshots remain which will be presented further along in this video. You wouldn't believe the work I had to go through to dig these up. I wonder why they were even private in the first place. But regardless, trouble would arise when one artist within the label and tour group turned out to be not so good. Mando Pony, similar to Nate, was an artist that found his footing in the FNAF fandom. His songs were deemed classics up until 2020, which is when he was exposed for just being a disgusting human being. Without this shifting into a video focused on him, all the allegations released against him have more than enough proof to stand on. I'll link a video and Twitter thread in the description if you'd like to learn more yourself. To cut it short though, turns out that Mando Pony likes kids in the worst of ways. While that's all terrible, I'm sure you must be pondering about what Nate has to do with all of this. Well, Mando Pony was an individual that Give Heart Records partnered up with. It was to the extent that Mando even got to go on tour with Nate. Before moving on, let me make it clear. Nate had no knowledge of Mando's abhorrent acts and that was how the degenerate was able to abuse his time on Nate's tour and go after more victims. Fortunately, he was dropped as soon as the evidence came to light and Nate ceased contact with him immediately. However, this wouldn't be the last time that being associated with FNAF revealed itself to be an obstacle for Nate wants to battle. Burnout is a phenomenon which impacts any person that has a knack for the creative arts. That's why it's imperative to never push yourself too hard to the point where you feel trapped with whatever it is that you do. Nathan Sharp found himself backed against a corner facing this same burnout. The guy made more songs than any A-list celebrity could even dream of releasing in a lifetime. Over 300 songs, which is more than any musician should do in their lifetime, more often than not, they were about the Five Nights games as they progressed from part 1 to Security Breach. He even produced bangers around other indie titles as they ran their course of popularity. The thing is though, these songs act as his primary source of income I imagine, and without them, he simply wouldn't have the funds to continue working on bigger projects. That's the consequence of tying yourself to one franchise. It's harder to branch out when the most acknowledgement your work gets is when it's related to something else entirely. 
And that can be demotivating on its own to know that you don't have full control over the content that you put out. To combat this fatigue, Nate found a great workaround. He'd pull his inspiration for the lyrics of his songs from different parts of his own life. I wrote this Five Nights at Freddy's song about feeling lost and outcast. So that sounds something maybe relatable. Check out the full song. These songs were derived from Nate's personality and journey. Not only did they act as fuel for Nate's rampant burst of album releases, but ironically, it was also the biggest contributor as to why his songs are so goddamn iconic. Think back to Salvaged, Nightmare, even Mangled. They're all pieces that can fit within the distorted FNAF canon. But to be honest, they work just as well as their own songs. I wrote this song when I was mentally struggling. I was getting so swept up by work and social media and I completely had lost my own sense of identity in other people's expectations. Don't do that. Nate's relatability is what makes these songs so unique. We connected to these songs because they came from a place of truth and discovery and not just some desire to make as much money as possible. Soon we'll be set free. We're only kids who lost our way. But if we wait long enough, we will be saved. Just sleep, just dream. Inevitably though, all good things must come to an end. On the 24th of August 2022, Nate posted a video under the title of It's Time to Move On where he briefly went over what we just discussed in terms of burnout. I, I think it's time to move on to other things, but not before we do this without one last big hurrah. And so with the release of his newest album called Scrap Heap and one heartwarming goodbye, Nate retired. Or so we thought. Turns out he'd later make this community post which dictated how the recent economic crisis had scared him so he'd promptly return to making FNAF music. Whether that is the best decision for Nate personally is something yet to be revealed. If anything though, this just proves how my latter points were correct in that Nate's career and FNAF are inseparable at this point. Although that isn't necessarily a bad thing. He wouldn't have been able to reach as many people were it not for his association with Scott Cawthon's empire. As for now, I believe Nate has run the course of what he wished to do with his career. The reason we don't see him around as much can be boiled down to how, aside from music, there isn't much he wants to do. And that's alright. Like PewDiePie, Nate wants to battle is still here. He's just past the point where he wants to grow his brand. You could say he's done with the main story and is just now filling out side quests. Quite frankly, he's done his part, and whatever is to come, it's clear that Give Heart Records will carry on his legacy. If you enjoyed this video, I have a feeling you want to consume more YouTuber content. Well, don't fret, here's another video right here personalized just for you. So give it a watch why don't you, something tells me you won't be disappointed. Until next time though, this has been Vexidus and see ya.